1897, the physicist Joseph John or J.J. Thompson was working in the Cavendish lab in Cambridge with a glass tube experiment called a cathode ray tube. And the year before, a physicist in Germany had used a similar thing to discover x-rays, but inside the tube, there was this glowing green light called cathode rays, and no one knew what they were made of or how they worked. So Thompson decided to switch his research over to looking at this. And he got one of these tubes, and there was a couple of different things he wanted to ask about it. He was, the question he was asking was, what is the nature of these cathode rays? And the first question was, well, do the cathode rays have a charge? Because Thompson's idea was that the cathode rays, instead of being a form of light, which uh, the German researchers thought, Thompson thought it might be a type of particle. So he thought, okay, well, first I can check that by seeing if it has an electric charge. And so he used down this tube a magnetic deflection of the charged particles to test that it had an electric charge and confirm that yes, it did, and it had a surprisingly large electric charge. And the second thing he wanted to know was, okay, what is the mass of this? If this is a type of particle, maybe uh, it's not a type of particle we've seen before. And so then he tried using an electric field to bend the beam around to test this. Then he ran into a problem. When he deflected the beam with an electric field, a large field would deflect it as he expected, but a small field wouldn't. It was like it was a particle for a large electric field and a wave or a type of light for the small electric field, and it didn't make any sense to him at all. But he investigated further and eventually he found that if he pumped out more gas from the tube, it worked as he had predicted. So then he was able to figure out that what was happening inside the tube was not a type of light at all. It was a type of particle about 2,000 times lighter than the hydrogen atom, which was the lightest thing that they knew. What Thompson found is what we would now call the electron, the first subatomic particle. This might seem divorced from our everyday lives and applications. Even Thompson didn't think that the electron would be of any use to anybody. But what happened after that is quite interesting because in the United States, Thomas Edison had been inventing light bulbs in a kind of trial and error approach. And they failed a lot over time. So he was changing all of the, the filaments in the light bulbs. And he observed a funny effect one day, which is that if he added a couple of different filaments, the light bulb would be able to switch an electrical current on and off. Now, he didn't think anything more of it. He patented it, called the Edison effect, and he moved on to trying to sell his light bulbs. But Thomson was quite interested in this, and he discovered that light bulbs also emit electrons just like the tubes that he'd been using. And this was the key insight which led Alexander Fleming a few years later to invent a kind of bulb or tube which intentionally turned an electrical current on and off when it received a radio signal. And that was the birth of the electronics industry because the ability for electrons to move through these bulbs and turn signals on and off and oscillate and modulate became the foundation of radar, telecommunications and of early computers. And if it wasn't for Thomson's discovery of the electron, we'd have had none of it. Now, the difference with electronic devices is that electronics relies on electrons moving through vacuum or through gases. We already had electrical devices, which is fields and electrons traveling through wires. But that's the key difference. Electronics is really now a new field where things can happen very rapidly because you've got electrons traveling through the vacuum or through air. This story is just one of many about physics experiments that changed our world that features in my new book called The Matter of Everything.